What I'm going to do is give you a quick climate change 101. It's quick, so we're going to move here. Hope you're ready. To start out with, the quickest way I've ever heard someone describe climate change is in 10 words, and this is a dear friend and colleague, Ed Maybeck at George Mason University Center for Climate Change Communication. It's real. It's us. Experts agree. It's serious. And there's hope. So that's the quickest way you can really summarize what we're about to get into. So let's get started. The science of climate change and the reason we have such succinct understanding of what's going on goes back to the 1800s. It all comes down to the greenhouse effect. That's where we know that the sun comes in, it warms our planet, some of that sunlight bounces off and escapes back up into space. Other parts of that sunlight and the energy are captured in our atmosphere in what we call greenhouse gases. Well understood, nobody challenges this. We understand what those greenhouse gases are and we can measure them. And we know that since the beginning of the industrial age, these numbers are going through the roof. It is the highest we've ever been with our levels of greenhouse gas and focusing here specifically on carbon dioxide, one of the leading forms of greenhouse gases. It's not only the highest it's been in at least 800,000 years, science thinks maybe three to five million years, but it's also the rate of change that we're experiencing that is so extraordinary and something we've never experienced in human history. So we're really pushing our limits. Now we know where this comes from. I'm gonna break this down between the United States and globally. In the US, our leading source of emissions are through transportation, very close second, electricity. Now globally, it's a little bit different, but generally the same sources. Transportation isn't as big of a role globally, but what plays a bigger role globally is land use and agriculture, where we have this big, beautiful rainforest and how we're really incorporating them into our whole global climate system. So we know where these are coming from and we're measuring more of them in our atmosphere. And the thing is, the more greenhouse gases we put into the atmosphere, the more we turn up that thermostat. There's a direct connection between carbon dioxide, methane, and other greenhouse gases, and our temperature. And since 1880 here, sort of the best measuring of records to start here, we've already turned up that thermostat by a degree Celsius. And just to put that in perspective, remember that the Paris Climate Change Agreement has this goal of limiting warming to two degrees Celsius with an aspiration of 1.5. And look at that, already at 1.1. And after we finalize all of last year's numbers, and it's, it's happening right now, we're pushing that 1.2. So one degree, what does that mean? Well, it shifts us into an entirely new climate. This is what we just saw last week on full display in the United States. We still have cold in this distribution of temperatures. It's still possible but it just doesn't happen quite as much as compared to the amount of heat that we are shifting into our entire system. For every round of record cold, we're getting four to six rounds of record heat. And that is changing our weather across the board. Not only those days where it's challenging our human health, but it's supercharging our entire water cycle. So there's more evaporation in the atmosphere. And when it does come down, it's coming down in buckets, big downpours. The other thing, when we don't get that water, the drought is intensifying and it's setting the stage for these big explosive wildfires like we saw in the United <clears> States <throat> last year, Australia and Siberia, really big life shattering moments. The other thing too, look at this, hurricanes, they are typhoons, cyclones, different names across the globe, but they're all getting stronger. They're intensifying more rapidly. They're bringing more rain with them. And when they do make landfall, they're coming with a higher storm surge because of sea level rise. So it's not just our atmosphere that's warming. The vast majority of our heat that is coming into the climate system is going into our oceans. Over 90% is going into the oceans. That is raising our sea levels. That's shifting entire food ecosystems. It's bleaching our corals. And our oceans are also sucking up all of that carbon dioxide. That's changing the chemistry of our oceans. But it's not just the health and the ecosystems in the ocean, it's human health that's being challenged here too. We're having worsening air quality across the board. We're also seeing stronger, longer allergy seasons. And our bugs like mosquitoes and ticks that carry diseases are spreading farther and they're lasting longer. We're seeing that human health is challenged, but also our economies are being challenged on a really extraordinary level. If you look at this average on the top left-hand chart, we used to have these billion dollar disasters a couple of times a year. I mean, billion dollars to that level. 
Last year alone in the United States, there were over 20 of those. It's just absolutely extraordinary. We're seeing how it's changing our power systems. A lot of what was on display in Texas. Now, not all of that was weather related and climate related, but weather related power outages are on the rise. And climate change is getting into so much of what we do. And the reason we call it a story for every beat, it's changing our sports. It's changing some of our our favorite beverages, right? Beer, coffee, wine are all being threatened with our changing climate. So it's weather, it is food, land and sea, water, health, economy. Sometimes people don't make this full connection, but this is a racial equality and a social justice story on so many levels because those who are hurt the hardest are getting even amplified with the impacts of climate change. Infrastructure, buildings, roads, energy, transportation, coastal flooding, changing oceans, shifting ecosystems, shifting seasons, national security, migration, sports, lifestyle activities, and our ways of life. This is a story for all of these because all of these aspects of life are being affected by climate change. So what do we do, right? What does that mean for us? Well, this is where we are. Last year, with COVID and all of the restrictions we saw on movement and transportation, we did see a dip in our emissions. The thing is, that's not how we want to do this, right? We want to do this in a sustainable and equitable way moving forward. And last year, depending on which data source you look at, it was about a five to 7% dip in emissions. We need between two and a half to seven and a half percent dip in emissions every year for the next decade to have a chance of making these global goals that we have in the Paris Climate Change Agreement. So this is not going to be easy, but it is doable. And this is what I wanna leave you with today. We have the technology and solutions already in place to make a lot of these really big transitions and start to bring those emissions down in big ways. Again, it's not going to be easy, but we can do it. And the public, they know something's happening. Sometimes they don't know exactly what's happening. They have a lot of questions about this, and you're in an opportunity to connect the dots for them. There's such a range of stories from electrifying transport. I mean, honestly, if you haven't driven an electric car yet, it's fun. It's not just a, a moral thing. This is actually a fun transition out there, too. It's cleaner air for our kids on their school buses. We're looking at solar and wind may sound like, oh, it's been around a while and it has, but we need to scale it. And the fact that the world has come together and agreed upon limiting these missions going forward in the Paris Climate Change Agreement, the fact the United States is back is enormous. The world does not agree very often on any single issues. And they did because they know how serious this is. So this is why you hear scientists talk about this being an emergency, a crisis, and such urgency in the voice. And this is why it is a story for every beat. So as we go forward, the future really is our choice. And we have this opportunity to answer the questions that the public has about what's happening. So there is your quick summary of a Climate 101. I'm going to hand it back to Mark.